Hi, and welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to talk about Stephen King books again. <laughs> so last time I made a video of my Stephen King bookshelf. You can watch it up here. And today I just want to talk about the books that I have actually read from Stephen King. And to do this, I made a tier list because I like watching tier lists and just ranking the books uh, myself. So yeah, that, this is the kind of video that we're going to do today. So I added 24 books because I've read 24 books from Stephen King, or at least I have started reading them. Some of them I haven't finished. That's why we have an unfinished category. But yeah, we're just going to get through all the 24 books. The categories that I have made for this tier list are absolute masterpiece. So here will go the books that I really liked, like the Stephen King classics, and I enjoyed reading a lot. Then we have Beautifully Dark, these are the books that I have also enjoyed and that are nicely written with good characters and a good story, but just missing that last like thing to be a masterpiece. So also really good books. Then we have the one time read and average pile. And these are the books that I have read, but um, yeah, one time is enough. I'm not going to reread them. There are fine, uh, like a three, three star read, something like that. And then, like I said, we have the unfinished pile and these are books that I have started, but I have not finished. And it's quite a lot, not only from Stephen King. I have a lot of books that I have not finished. And I used to have this bad habit of reading a book almost to the end and then stop reading it for no particular reason. Uh, so I still have quite some books that I have to reread again and actually finish them. So I have a couple from Stephen King also in this uh, category. And then the last category is Waste of Time. And these are, are the books that I really didn't like or DNF'd at all. Like, I'm not going to come back to them. So please keep in mind that this is just my opinion. It's not that the books are bad per se. You can like them, obviously. Uh, and you can have <laughs> these books maybe in totally different categories, all of them. It, this is just my opinion. It's just a list that I have made from my experience with the books so please don't be mad <laughs> if i put in a book that you like from him in the waste of time category it was a waste of time for me at least so let's get started first one i will just go uh, with the list here the first one that we have is Cujo, and this one i have read i think two years ago something something like that and yeah i i really liked it it was a good book a good story and I'm going to put it in the beautifully dark category. It wasn't perfect. I like the story of this like rabbit dog that is uh, out of sudden terrorizing the family or the mother and the child. And the father is like absent in most of the story, but still plays an important role to the whole plot. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed reading it. And it, it is not really scary, but it had its moments that you were like thinking like, oh, this is really gruesome. So yeah, Cujo is uh, one of the older Stephen King books and yeah, it deserves a spot here. Then we have Carrie, the first book published by Stephen King. For me, it's a one-time read. So yeah, I, I liked the story just to read it once. I didn't enjoy the movies, um, both of them. And the story itself, it's nice. It's a comedy of age story, but then with like a lot of plot twists and supernatural and just like this, those Stephen King vibes that we all know. Uh, it's his first book to really like publish. And um, it's actually a book that he wanted to throw away. But then um, you know, we all know, I think the story, if you like Stephen King, his wife said, no, it's a good book. You should finish it and publish it. But yeah, it, it was nice to read it for the first time, but I'm not going to read it. And it was just like an average read for me. Then there is, of course, Finders Keepers, the second part of the Bill Hodges trilogy or the Mr. Mercedes uh, books. And um, unfortunately, I haven't finished this one. Uh, so it's going to the unfinished pile. I started reading it after finishing Mr. Mercedes. And for some reason, I just, I, I think I have like maybe 70 pages left, something like that, maybe even less. Um, but yeah, I decided not to finish it. So now if I want to finish the whole trilogy, I would start over with Finders Keepers from the beginning. But so far, while I was reading it, it was very interesting and I liked the story. It was it had a lot of suspense in it and also really good characters. So yeah, I did enjoy it and I don't know why I stopped reading it. Then Firestarter, also like a Stephen King classic, one of his older books. But for me, a one-time read. It was very average 
actually i um i did enjoy a little bit the book i really didn't like the movies the old one and the new one it's just it's just not for me but the book itself i like the character of the father but i didn't like the child in the movies or in the book i found her very annoying and i just i cannot explain why per se just the way she talks in the book or in the movies and the way she acts um really annoying for me and the whole story was too predictable so yeah for me fire starter was like no more than three stars then feel dark no stars this is a short story compilation uh like or four novellas are in there i think and i haven't finished reading it so i also i think i finished most of the stories and i only had one to read uh and then i stopped reading it but i really did like this anthology of uh, short stories there are a couple of movies made from it and yeah, I, I think it's a really good one. So I will go back to it and try to read it again. Then Gwendy's Button Box, which is written with Richard Gismar. I just finished reading the second part, but the second part is not written by Stephen King. So it's not in here. But the first uh, book is written by Stephen King and Richard Gismar. And yeah, I, I did enjoy it. But for me, it's a one-time read. So it's it's not... I think it's three stars a word. Um, maybe three and a half. I like the story idea. So this button box that controls the world. And just one little girl that gets the button box. And kind of has to make these big decisions. I enjoyed the story. But it didn't have any more depth than that for me. So yeah, one-time read. I'm not going back to it. Then another short story compilation uh if it bleeds this one uh contains also the story with like the mr mercedes and the outsider uh universe with holly i did enjoy the story and i enjoyed a couple of them but most of them were a little bit forgettable i don't have any specific short story that i really loved in here they were fine so again one time read then we have it <laughs> from Stephen King. so maybe there's a little bit cliche but i'm going to put it with the absolute masterpieces I enjoyed reading this book. I know it's very long and I know a lot of people find it too long, um, but I enjoyed every part of it. So I enjoyed every description of the town of Derry and its history. I really liked reading it. So for me, it's an absolute masterpiece. The characters are very good to find. We see them grow up from uh, the like, child uh, period, um, child age to when they're adults in their 30s and come back to the town to fight the monster again so yeah i really liked the whole book there's no bad part for me in it except maybe towards the end there's like this weird part that stephen king has wrote if you know you know <laughs> what i'm talking about so there was one thing that i didn't like um i thought that was unnecessary but it it wasn't too long for me i really enjoyed the characters and just seeing them grow up then uh joyland this one one time read not a bad story per se um but just yeah <laughs> just an average story i think a little bit forgettable we have this uh, teenage boy that's not going back to college but is taking a break for a year and works at this uh, amusement park but obviously something supernatural is going on in this amusement park and he makes some friends he makes some enemies and he uh, also has to make this all this, like ethical decisions what he's going to do with his life uh, so it's a it's a nice coming of age story uh, but for me, one time reads. I don't think there was more depth to it that I have to reread it again. I read it, I think, last summer. And I already noticed that I started to forget like the bigger parts of the story. So it wasn't that memorable for me. Then another short story compilation. So I really like reading short stories. And fortunately, Stephen King has written a lot of short stories and does have multiple compilations, collections. Uh, so yeah, I like reading those. Uh, this is on just after sunset and it contains some nice short stories that I can remember. So I'm going to put it in um, Beautifully Dark. So I, I did enjoy some of the uh, short stories in there. Then <laughs> We have Later, uh, also one of the more recent books of Stephen King. And um, yeah, I really didn't like it. <laughs> so it's going to waste of time. I have also not purchased this book. I read it on my e-reader. Uh, I got it for free, I think, from um, a colleague of mine. And yeah, I, I just really didn't like it. I don't know what's wrong with it, but because it does have like the same vibe as Joyland. But it's not as well written. Um, I didn't like the characters at all, none of them. And it was very, very predictable. Like, I already knew how the story would end, I think, 
a couple of pages into the book. And it was uh, one cliche after another for me. So yeah, th th this one is a really waste of time for me. Then Misery. I think this one is like an actual classic. I really, really liked reading it. So it's going to the absolute masterpiece. And um, yeah, I like the Stephen King wrote a story within a story. So we're following this writer. I think his name was Paul Sheldon. Yeah. And he's writing a book, but, um, or like he has written a book series, but now he stopped, but he has this one fan, uh, and a lot of, I think older fans that don't like the fact that he stopped writing this series of books. Um, but yeah, he stopped, he made a lot of money and he just wants to enjoy and write something else. But then after uh celebrating i think his the, the publishing of his book he goes on a ride obviously he has consumed some alcohol and there is this snowstorm going on so um he gets an into an accident and someone saves him from <laughs> under cooling and dying in the snow and that person uh turns out to be his biggest fan but um not in a good way <laughs> so it's a really good story and at the same time while he's like being captured by this fan, he has to write another story and we actually read that other story, which is also really interesting. And just those two stories intertwined together. I really like that idea. And um, yeah, I had a lot of fun reading it. And it was, it wasn't too scary, but it was very suspenseful. And the whole time you were like rooting for this uh, writer, Paul Sheldon, to escape and uh, every time something happens to him and you are like, oh no, how, how is he going to survive this? But yeah. And I also like the character of the villain. So this, uh, fan of his, uh, I think she was also very well written and, uh, really is a scary person, like someone you wouldn't like to meet. So yeah, it's a really good book. So moving on to the next one, which is Mr. Mercedes, and this is part of a trilogy that I haven't finished yet, but I read the first book and I really enjoyed it. So it's going to the beautifully dark. It's not a masterpiece per se for me, but it's, it's good. It's a good story, good characters. And there were parts in it that I was like, oh yeah, this, <laughs> this is dark, like really dark. And judging from like Finders Keepers, the second part, I think the whole series is quite strong um, and well-written. So I would like to finish it uh, somewhere soon. I don't think I would have the time this year to finish the series, but um, yeah, maybe next year. Then another short story collection, Night Shift. And for me, this is like a real masterpiece. This story contains multiple short stories that I really like, really enjoy. And also I think almost all short stories are made into movies and some of them I also enjoyed a lot. Um, so yeah, reading Night Shift was like a really nice experience. Uh, some stories are very far-fetched and just weird <laughs> and it's more it's more like magical realism than horror uh, some of them but um yeah it's i for me it's a really good collection of weird and interesting stories so from all the short story collection this is my most uh, favorite one then we have a non-fiction from Stephen King on writing this book is just a memoir and tips on writing his advice on how to write fiction i really enjoyed it yeah, is it a masterpiece? I don't know. I think it's more beautifully dark. <laughs> so he explains some of his ideas and how he creates these monsters, the situations. Um, yeah, so I, I, I enjoyed reading it. I think it's difficult to define in any of these categories, but I'm just going to put it here. Then we have my favorite book of all time, which is Pet Cemetery. Uh, I love the movie, uh, especially like the first movie, the older one. I also enjoyed the second movie, but for me, the the first movie was the best and then when i read the book it was even better so this one is actually scary in my opinion uh on multiple levels <laughs> and yeah it's one of my favorite books of all time so it's um, definitely going into the masterpiece pile then we have uh revival and this is like a really forgettable one i read it i think five years ago so and when i was um organizing my stephen king bookshelf i saw this book and i was like trying to remember what the story was about and I couldn't I I really don't know what I was reading at the time I do remember the ending a little bit that uh, I like the ending but I don't know everything that happened before so I think I would go back to the story and try to read it but not soon uh, so for now it's for me an average and a little bit forgettable book and the same goes for Salem's Lot so this one I did read recently and it's not forgettable per se it's more 
not something that I enjoyed. It's about vampires. And even though a lot of people like this book, uh, for me, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's going to the average pile for now. Then a book that Stephen King has written with his son, Overking. And I really, really tried to like this book but I've DNF'd it and for me it was a waste of time. I just couldn't get into it. There were too many characters and every time a new character was introduced it was just added to the pile of characters that were very shallow, very flat and didn't add anything to the story. And the story itself didn't really progress. So I was leading, I was thinking at, at page 100. Uh, so I read 100 pages and still the story didn't really progress into anything. I, I didn't finish it so it's a DNF. And it feels like a, uh, a waste of time because, um, yeah, <laughs> I didn't like anything about this book. So, yeah, if you liked it, tell me in the comments why did you like it, if the ending was any good. Uh, so maybe one day I will come back to it. But for now, I don't think so. And that's too bad because most of the times I do enjoy Stephen King books, even if they're a little bit weird or not entirely my taste. Uh, sometimes he writes like this thriller and... Uh, more detective-like stories. It's not really my taste, but even those I can enjoy more than this one. We have also The Bazaar of Bad Dreams. This is also a short story compilation and yeah, beautifully dark. It was really good. There were some stories in here, especially the one with the car, like this alien car. I really liked it. Uh, so, and there were a couple of others that were just good. It's like generally bad dreams kind of stories. The ones that are not really nightmares, but do give you bad dreams um, if you read them before bedtime. So a really good compilation of stories. Then we have The Green Mile, uh, I think. If I have had finished this book, I would put it in the masterpiece because it started out very strong. I enjoyed it a lot, but I didn't finish it. I don't know why. Uh, again, I just stopped reading it. And uh, so far, while I was reading it, I really enjoyed the story. So I think I'm going to come back to this one really soon. I, it's one of the classics. It's also a really good movie that I did finish watching. So yeah, it's a very bad habit of mine to not finish books. Then we have the first book of the Dark Tower Singer uh, series, which is the Gunslinger. Gunslinger. And yeah, I haven't finished that one either. I started reading it. It's not that I no didn't enjoy it, but at that time it, it was more like a fantasy and I wanted to read a little bit more horror. Yeah, I think I read half of it and then stopped reading it. So yeah, I need to come back to it. And I think I will wait until I have the time to like actually read the whole series uh all eight books so yeah for now it's um it's not in the cards to read it now then we have the institute um this one is going to the average pile i i enjoyed it a little bit i read it one time it contains some good story elements but it's just it, it missed something and i cannot explain what exactly but uh yeah it wasn't as memorable as I would like it to be. Uh, I think it had the potential to be a really good book, but it just, it wasn't missing something for me um, about the characters, about the whole institute that the story took place. I wanted a little bit more backstory, like the backstory that we had in it, a lot of history about the institute maybe, or like more about uh, the experiments that they did there. That would have been better, but uh, for now it was just an average read. Um, and not something that I plan to reread someday. And then the last one is The Shining. Uh, and this is going immediately to the masterpiece. I love this book. And the funny thing is that when I started reading it, I did not expect to like it so much uh, because I watched the movie The Shining and I didn't like that one. I didn't like the actors in it and also the, like the whole movie, how it was filmed. Um, so when I started reading the book, I realized that a lot uh, of the story of the book is not filmed and it's not shown in the movie. And those were, in my opinion, the parts that were the most enjoyable, the most interesting about the characters and about their, like the, their backstory. So yeah. And I, I also think that most of the books in this pile, in the masterpiece bookshelf, they do have some scary elements. So in general, I think most books of Stephen King are not scary to me, but this is a, it's a personal opinion. Um, I think a lot of people would find them scary, but for me, it's, it's not, <laughs> but the ones in the masterpiece, they all do have some elements that I did find a little bit scary. So the one a little bit more than the other, like Pet Cemetery is for me the most scary of them all and mystery is the, has the most suspense, but it's, and some stories in Night Shift and The Shining do have 
scary passages, scary moments in the book. So this is all for now. And um, I hope to read more Stephen King books because I think he is one of, yeah, he is one of my favorite writers. And it that doesn't mean that he only writes good books. Obviously, he has some that I don't like. He has some that I find average. And we see that most that I have read of him are in like in the average pile. They're good for a one-time read, but it's not something that I really loved or really remember that much. But yeah, this like eight books that we have here. Oh, sorry, 10 books. Yeah, those are like my most favorite of Stephen King. Um, and I hope that this pile will get bigger. And also I, I obviously have to read The Dark Tower, which is like a very big part of Stephen King's writing. I feel like uh, The Dark Tower is one of his more important like books that he has written because they intertwine with some other books and it's like the whole universe that he has created in his writing. But for now, this is all that I've read. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tier list and I'm really curious about uh, your opinion on Stephen King books that you have read. So let me know if you agree or disagree with me, if some of the books that I like, you like too, or maybe the ones that are like in the waste of time or average pile, maybe you uh, disagree with that and you really enjoyed those books. So let me know. I'm always interested in someone else's opinion about the book that I've read because I think a reading is a solitary experience and we can read the same book at the same time and still have a different opinion and understand maybe the text even differently. So yeah, it's, I think it's nice to hear what you guys think and I will see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>